With Etchcam's 2D milling wizard, we can automatically create our stock geometry with no actual part file required. By selecting our rectangular stock option, we can enter our length, our width, our Z depth, specify our origin, and Etchcam will automatically create the geometry for us. We can also select our profile option, which allows us to sketch our stock, or we can select existing and import an existing piece of geometry as our stock as well. For this example, we're going to select our profile option and sketch our stock. We can also choose from four different types of machining features, holes, slots, closed pockets, and open pockets. As you can see here, Edgecam is prompting me to specify my length of my geometry, and I'm going to enter a length of 10 inches horizontally, and Edgecam will create the line for me. Then I'm going to select a vertical line, a length of five inches, six inches, and have Edgecam populate that piece of geometry as well. As you can see here, I could also work with angles. I could also remove the last element if necessary in case I've made a mistake. I'm going to put that line back in. And then I'm going to have Edgecam automatically close my loop. Once I've closed my profile, Edgecam will ask me if I want to fill up my corners. I will say yes, enter a fillet radius of 300 thou, and start selecting my entities to fill it. At this point in time, Edgecam will ask me if there's any other fillets to place. I'll choose no and proceed to selecting the machine that I'll be working with. Edgecam will place my stock on the table and as you can see here within a few clicks we, we were able to create a free form shaped piece of stock. Creating holes is very easy with Edgecam's 2D milling wizard. We can select from a library of predefined hole diameters, specify a custom size, we can specify if this hole is through or blind, specify depth, we can also work with tab tools, we also have a library of predefined tab sizes, we can also specify custom sizes. Everything that is related to a hole feature is all driven through one menu dialog box. We're going to select a hole size of 0.312, specify depth. Now, once we've selected the hole size, we can manually click the position on screen, or we can enter X and Y coordinates and specifically place our hole on a specific location. Once the holes are placed, Edgecam will give us the diameter required, which now we can go into the Edgecam tool library, select the drill size, and have Edgecam automatically program these holes. Now we're going to place a few tap tools. We're going to select from our standard library these holes are going to be through, we're going to say OK. Again, we can manually click on screen and place these holes or we can enter our X and Y coordinates and place the holes in any location. Once the hole locations are placed, Edgecam will give us the diameter that is required. We can go into our Edgecam library, select the drill size, Then Edgecam will give us our tapping diameter. We can go into the library, select our tap, and once again, Edgecam has fully programmed these holes. We're also going to enter a clearance hole. We're going to say it's a profile hole, and we're going to give it a custom size 
of 125 diameter. I'm going to click on the screen and place this manually. Now Edgecam knows that this is a profiled hole and it's, instead of selecting a drill it's going to prompt us to select a milling cutter. It will give us the diameter that's best suited for this but we can override that and select any size end mill that we choose. Once we say OK, Edgecam will give us another menu box to work with where we can simply specify our offsets, our depths of cuts, our depth of cut for finishing pass, select OK, and have Edgecam automatically program this profile hole. Creating slots with Edgecam's 2D Milling Wizard is very similar to the hole creation. We can work with predefined slot sizes or enter a custom size. We can enter the length, the width, the depth. We can specify if this hole is through or blind. If it's a blind, we'll enter the depth of the slot and specify the orientation horizontal vertically. Once we've selected these options, we can manually place this slot on our part or we can enter our X and Y coordinates. Edgecam will automatically recognize the last end mill that was used. We can select to choose that same end mill and then enter our offsets, our depths of cut parameters for roughing and for finishing. Once we say OK, Edgecam will simply automatically program this slot. We can then enter other slot sizes if we choose. In this case, I'm going to change the length. I'm going to change the depth of this second slot. And I'm going to change the orientation. I'm going to manually place this on my parts. No other slots. And I'm going to use the same tool. Now in this slot, I'm not going to require a finishing pass, just only roughing, and there's no offset to be left. Working with closed pockets is very similar to the last features we just created. We can sketch a closed pocket, specify if it's through or blind. We can select rectangular, enter our length, width, or corner radius. say OK. We can specify a reference point. Is it on the left corner, top right corner, bottom left, bottom right, or the center of the pocket? Place our pocket on our part. Edge cam will prompt us for the last milling cutter that was used. We're going to say no this time. And we're going to select a different milling cutter to use. Select the correct milling cutter, say OK. We're going to have a finishing pass. We're going to enter our offsets, adjust our depths of cuts for roughing and finishing. And say OK. Edge Kim will automatically create our geometry and our tool path. Now our last feature to place. We'll be creating an open pocket. We'll specify a length, a width, our corner radius, and we'll say that it's a through pocket. Then we're going to select the edge on where this open pocket is to be placed. We'll select our reference point. and select the point that we're going to reference the open pocket to. Once the pocket, the open pocket has been placed, Edgecam will recognize the last milling cutter. In this case we'll say no, not to use the same one. We'll, create, we'll select the new cutter. Once again, specify our offsets and depths of cuts. Say OK. 
and Edgecam will automatically program this open pocket. We're going to specify and enter a new open pocket, change our dimensions a bit. In this case, it's going to be a blind pocket. We're going to enter depth. Say OK. Select the new edge to place this open pocket on. And select our reference point. As you can see here, Edgecam has automatically created our geometry and also has created our toolpath automatically. We're going to use the same cutter as last time and keep the same settings and say OK. With Edgecam's 2D Milling Wizard, not only can you create automatic geometry and toolpath creation, but you can also take advantage of Edgecam's full machine simulation, which allows you to verify your job in real time, detecting collisions against your stock, your tooling, fixturing, and any machine component. With Etchcam's 2D Milling Wizard, we were able to automatically create stock geometry, feature geometry, and produce efficient tool paths automatically. Etchcam's 2D Milling Wizard is true wireframe automation.